Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Today is August the 15th, 2020. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's be blunt here. Right? Understand. Sometimes the truth is elusive. You hear things, there are different takes of things and stuff like that. You aren't sure if there's a fire there, but you see a lot of smoke. And you wonder how the smoke got in the sky. David Benavides, the WBC, now the former WBC, super middleweight champion, is someone the people on YouTube here my subscribers tell me about. Whenever I mention a Khaled plant, whenever I mention a Billy Joe Saunders, whenever I mention the possibility of Canelo at 168, a Callum Smith, someone in the comments section always talks about David Benavides. Unbeaten. Huge KO percentage. Power in both hands. Can throw short punches. Usually owns the pocket in his fights. But he's a guy who has always given me pause. Now, I'm just talking about myself. This is one man's opinion, right? I feel the best in the division. Let's have opinions here. Is Caleb Plant. I don't believe a Caleb Plant-David Benavides fight would be competitive. I think Plant just moves too well. I think Benavides is going to look like that guy who, when Plant has 100% of his stamina, won't be able to catch him. Benavides is going to be waiting around until the last half of the fight he needs for Caleb Plant to slow down to make the fight competitive in my eyes. But understand, before we get to Caleb Plant, let's back up a bit. Benavides was the champ at 168 pounds. And then, while he was outside of competition, you know, they have a drug testing protocol these days. So in between fights, he got tested. And the drug that came back positive, according to the test, was cocaine. Right? Cocaine. Now, let me just say, of all the drugs out there that a fighter could take, cocaine is one of the worst. Right? I'd rather hear about clenbuterol. Cocaine is one of these drugs that speeds up your metabolism, that might help you lose weight. It's also highly addictive. Guys fall in love with coke, they never make it all the way back. If you're into music, you remember Rick James fighting cocaine for years. Now, of course, this got swept under the rug. This was the smoke in the air. Positive cocaine test. Right? It's all over the air. Then you heard there's no fire. Right? There were a lot of stories. Oh, tainted test. Uh, oh, this... You know, there must be confusion, uh, etc. Let's just say there are a lot of excuses and explanations. So, Benavides went and got his title back. Benavides has been having a little tussle in the media with Caleb Plant. The two guys supposedly want to fight each other. Now, let me just say this. As someone who bets on boxing from time to time, I question Benavides. I hear a cocaine test, and I'm wondering if this is a Doc Gooden situation from the 1980s. That's another guy who fought cocaine for years, right? I'm wondering if this positive test hints at dysfunction behind the curtain. Also, Benavides, you look at his fights, he seems to be carefully matched with guys who want to come find him, right? You don't see Benavides in with 
slick guys who know what a back foot is. <coughs> so Benavides had an upcoming fight scheduled against an underrated Avni Yildirim. Now, Yildirim used to have a big reputation in boxing. That was until he ran into Chris Eubank on one of Chris Eubank's best nights. For those who follow the Chris Eubank career, his night against Avni Yildirim and his retiring of James DeGale are both masterpiece fights. When Eubank is on it, he is outstanding. He beat Yildirim. I understand Yildirim lost to Anthony Durella's last fight. That's a fight I haven't seen yet. So, don't get me wrong. Yildirim is mortal. Like, like all of us. He's mortal. He's not unbeatable. He's been beaten twice. But I thought that he was an excellent test. Excellent test for David Benavides. Understand, Benavides, if he beats Angulo, who we'll talk about here, Romar Angulo, his next opponent, he would have to fight Avni Yildurum before ever getting to Caleb Plant. He would have to fight his mandatory challenger. The WBC has a protocol. If you want to wear their belt, you need to follow their rules. That includes fighting the mandatory. Right? Fight fans need to know that the champ's legit. Right? We want mandatories to have opportunities. Well, let me just say there are ways to play the game. There are ways to keep your unbeaten record. I'm just throwing out a hypothetical. There are ways to keep your unbeaten record without facing tough mandatory contenders who you know the crowd is undervaluing. Understand, Benavides wants you to come find him. Avni Yildura, Mr. Robot, would have gone looking for Benavides. Right? Benavides' work rate, a little bit uneven. Yildurim is a guy who can press you for 12 rounds. I was looking forward to that fight. Right? That fight was circled on my calendar. Not that they set the date, but I knew. Yildurim, mandatory. Right? Since I had questions about Benavides, especially post-drug test, I thought, okay, he's going to get tested here. So you know what happened. I don't have the facts. I'm just speculating. This isn't a statement of fact. But I find it curious that David Benavides, for a fight that's going to be on Showtime, shows up not one, but three pounds overweight. Three pounds overweight for his fight against Angulo. They said to him, hey, you have some time to lose the weight. He didn't use all the time he had. He agreed to be stripped of his title. Claimed he was, his words, bone dry. That he couldn't lose those last three pounds to make way. Folks, let's just say the cloud I'm seeing smells nauseous. One way to not have to deal with a tough mandatory is to lose your title on the scales so he's no longer a mandatory. Right, the story we're being told <clears throat> is that Benavides just couldn't lose the weight for a fight he had a long time to prepare for. Just couldn't lose the weight. And that he's sorry, but that he's still interested in fighting Caleb Plant in what would be a better paying fight. 
Am I the only one here who thinks that this miss of the weight limit may not have been entirely unwelcomed? That this miss of the weight limit <clears throat> might have been, and I don't have the facts, I'm just speculating, might have been strategic. Understand now, Avni Yildurim is off his dance card. He doesn't have to worry about Yildurim. He can now focus on Caleb Plant. In fact, he has maximum flexibility. He's still unbeaten, folks. You know he was a two-time champ. I'm sure there are people at 168 who want to fight him. I'm sure there are networks interested in televising his fights. He's a world-class fighter. I'm sure there are people at 175 who want to fight him. Right? I wouldn't be surprised if Kovalev's not on the phone right now saying, Hey, you missed weight at 168. Baby, I'm here at 175. Come see me. And so, yeah, also, I have a problem. You're the champ at 168. You show up, you're a little overweight. They then say, hey, player, you have more time to lose the weight. And you say, no, nah, no, nah, that's all right. I'm good. They explain to you, hey, you didn't make weight. If you don't make weight, you lose your title. And you say, no, nah, that's all right. I'm good. And you're someone who already lost your title in the past. You already know what that means. Right? This smells to me. Right? Let's just say, David Benavides, you have to make calls on fighters. Right? This guy seems shaky to me. I'm surprised many of you put him in the same paragraph with fighters like Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant. I'm surprised. Well, let's talk about the fight against Angulo. Now, let me just say, this fight is going to be fought, figuratively speaking, in a phone booth. Not a lot of lateral movement for either fighter. Both guys are convinced they're the harder puncher. Right? Both guys. Not only that, if you're the challenger and you're fighting the champion and he's unbeaten, you might say to yourself, wow, a close fight, which judge is going to give me his title? I don't want this to go to the distance. I need a stoppage. The way I'm playing this fight is to take both guys to win by KO. I don't want to take long odds on Benavides, a guy who doesn't even respect the sport enough to show up within one pound of the weight limit for a televised fight. Right? I don't, I don't want to pay expensive prices to take a favorite here. So I'm betting on the pacing of the fight. In my favorites folder is a fight. It's Angulo against Sims. Sims at the time was an unbeaten fighter, but he's a slick fighter. He's kind of like Caleb Plant. He moves around the ring. His vision of boxing is he hits you, you don't hit him. So you'll notice Angulo stalking him coming after him. Angulo's a front foot heavy fighter. You're not going to see him moving a lot laterally. On his back foot, on his toes, dancing. No, he's a power puncher coming to land a heavy, and it's a very heavy, right hand. He's only lost once. It was to Gilberto Ramirez. Right? Ramirez himself was big for the weight class. Right? Understand, these are heavy hitting guys who are relying on size, not agility, but size to beat you. 
So I'm expecting him to go for the KO. Let me say this too. If you've made your living winning by KO, and you hear that the champ, according to the champ, was wearing rubber suits, was in saunas, was trying to lose weight, might be depleted. Understand, your weight is related to your punch resistance. Guys who yo-yo a lot in weight don't have great punch resistance. They just don't. So when you hear that the champ was too out of shape to make weight, supposedly, and I say supposedly, was trying to lose three pounds the last few hours before we hopped on the scale, you might think, you know what, this guy's not ready to take my shots. That's going to inspire a power puncher to go for the kill early to have the shootout with the champ. KO puncher against KO puncher, thinking that the champ is not in shape to take the shots. I'm expecting both guys to come out with that attitude. Benavides, unbeaten, doesn't know what losing's about, wins most of his fights by stoppage. Right, Angulo, understanding that at 36 years old, and this is not Alfredo Angulo, this is Romar Angulo. Okay, for Alfredo. He, he understands, hold on one second. He understands that this is his shot. Alfredo. If, he, if he was Alfredo. looking for an opponent who has come into this fight unable to make the weight limit, he has that in front of him. So, the only call I'm making on this fight is that I don't believe it goes the distance. I think both guys are going to try to leave nothing to chance. They don't want the judges to make a call on this fight. If Benavides is going to convince you that he belongs in the ring with unbeaten Caleb Plant, he's going to have to do so by KO. I'm expecting a stoppage in this fight for a host of reasons. Benavides not being in shape, Benavides being a power puncher, and Gulo being a power puncher. I'm expecting a stoppage. That's how I'm playing it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.